Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to our youtube channel CAD engineering academy so dear students in today's video we will discuss the problem of the geometric properties so we have an angle se L uh, section uh, we have to calculate these different geometric properties like uh, area centroidal axis moment of inertia its product of inertia and polar moment of inertia so we have uh, an L section its dimensions are also given here first we have to calculate the area so if this is an L section uh, divide this into two rectangles let's suppose this is rectangle 1 and this is rectangle 2 so its total area will be equal to area of rectangle 1 plus area of rectangle 2 so its area will be uh, base into height so here is uh, the one thing when we divide this rectangle this is rectangle 1 this is rectangle 2 so its height will be 70 okay not its height will not be equal to 80 this 10 will be subtracted from 80 so its height is 70 uh, its base is 10 here its bend and the length is 60 so 16 to 10 and 10 into 70 uh, here the area will be equal to uh, 1300 millimeter square so the uh, next part is to locate its centroidal distance here this centroid is not known until now this centroid is not known so we have to locate this centroid how we will locate this is our reference axis z and y so from this reference axis we have to uh, locate its centroid so for y axis we have a formula y bar is equal to a1 v1 plus a2 v2 divided by a1 plus a2 so here we have two rectangles rectangle 1 and rectangle 2 here the area of uh, rectangle 1 is 16 to 10 600 and then uh, what is this y the y is the distance from this reference axis to the centroid of that rectangle so here uh, from this to this centroid the distance will be half of the 10 so it will be 5 so here y1 is 5 then again area 2 is uh, 10 into 70 okay this distance is not 80 it's 70 okay 10 will be subtracted from this so it will remain 70 its area will be 70 into 10 700 multiplied by y2 what is y2 y2 is the distance from this reference axis to the centroid of this rectangle 2 so here the centroid of this rectangle is its half so here this distance is 70 70 divided by 2 it will become equal to 35 okay and then uh, add this 10 okay this distance so it will become equal to 45 so here the where two distance will be from this reference axis to this centroid okay the centroid is the half of this distance uh, its height is 70 so 70 by 2 uh, will be equal to 35 and we also have to add this 10 distance 10 mm so it will become equal to 45 so here y2 will be 45 then again we have to find the centroidal axis about that so here it's uh, when we calculate this value it will become equal to 26.54 about the y-axis it means that about the y-axis we have to go 26.54 and then we have to find it on z-axis okay so that we could find its exact location so again we have a formula a1 z1 plus a2 z2 divided by a1 plus a2 so here area 1 is 600 multiplied by what is this 30 30 is the distance okay about the z axis uh, this is our reference axis so from this reference axis to the centroid it will be equal to the half of the 60 so it becomes 30 okay and then the area 2 will be 700 i have discussed and then what will be the uh, 5 is uh, z2 it will be the centroid distance about z axis uh, when we have uh, 10 so 10 by 2 will be equal to 5 so it's the 5 or z2 is this distance okay uh, from the reference axis to the centroid of the uh, rectangle 2 so when we uh, calculate this uh, values through calculator uh, its value will be 16.5 or it means that we have to go upward to 26.54 and then to uh, we have to go horizontally about the x axis uh, how much distance 16.54 and then this will be our centroid centroid of the section 
and the axis that pass through the centroid are called the centroidal axis. Here, as we know that this section is not symmetrical, so its centroidal axis and principal axis will not lie on each other. Okay, it will be different. Its neutral axis or principal axis location will be different. So here we will discuss that later. Okay, now we have to find the moment of inertia. Uh, we also discussed in the previous video the when we find the moment of inertia of the composite shape or those shapes which are not symmetrical about its axis, we have to use the shift formula or the parallel axis theorem. This uh, IZ moment of inertia about the whole section is equal to uh, moment of inertia of that individual section plus area multiplied by y square. What is, this uh, is also called d square. What is this y square? This y square is the centroid to centroid distance, vertical centroid to centroid distance. When we find moment of inertia about z axis, then this d square will be y, means vertical centroid to centroid distance. For example, from the centroid of these to the centroid of the whole section, this vertical distance will be y square. And similarly, in the second triangle, the centroid of the rectangle, and then this is the centroid of the L section. So its vertical distance, centroid to centroid distance will be y square. Okay, so we have to find the moment of inertia about this z centroidal axis. So we have to use this parallel axis theorem. So I z is the so here I z is the uh, moment of inertia of this uh, rectangle one. So here it will become equal to uh, b h cube by twelve. How we will know that which component will be cube? So when we find the moment of inertia about z axis, so its perpendicular component will be cube. So here the perpendicular component is height r n. So here we have to use bh cube by 12 okay then its area is 600 and this y square is the centroid to centroid distance here this vertical distance from the reference main reference axis to the centroid is 26.54 and we have to minus uh, 5 from it when we minus 5 from it then the centroid of this rectangle 1 to the main centroid distance will be fine okay this is 26.54 so minus 5 from it, the centroid to centroid distance will be uh, uh, fine. So it's y square, then we have to find it for uh, this rectangle, which is rectangle 2, then it will become equal to 10, the height is 70 uh, cube divided by 12, plus uh, 700 is the area, then uh, this is the y square is the, this distance, okay. This, if I extend this centroid from the centroid of the, rectangle 2 to the uh, centroidal and uh, main centroidal main centroid axis okay this vertical distance is y in case of the rectangle 2 so here it will be how much was this distance this distance was 45 okay so um, uh, subtract uh, 26.54 from uh, 45 you will get this distance okay so this was where in this distance and right to centroid distance when we calculate this value through calculator, this will be the moment of inertia about z axis. Similarly, with the same procedure for the moment of inertia about uh, y axis. So, here when we find the moment of inertia about y axis, on which component we put a cube? So, here the perpendicular component will be cube. So, here the perpendicular, those axis which is perpendicular to the y is base. So, here we will use h b cube by 12. Okay, remember these little points. So, base is 60, uh, its cube component will be 60. So, here 10 into 60 cube by 12 plus 600 is the area. Then what is this? Uh, 30 minus 16.5 for. In case of moment of inertia about y axis, this d square will be z. It means that centroid to centroid distance, the horizontal distance about the z axis. This is the centroid of the first rectangle and this is the centroid of the uh, whole section. So this distance will be z. Okay, this distance will be z. As we know that this distance was 30 which is the half of the 60 and when we subtract 16.54 from 30 we will get this distance okay uh, this is the uh, half of the 60 which is the centroid of the first rectangle when we subtract this distance which is the centroid of the whole section about z uh, 16.54 from uh, 30 we will get this one Okay, this one, you will get this one. So this is the Z in case of uh, this first rectangle, 30 minus 16.5 square. 
then in case of second uh, area this rectangular we have to put cube component on its base base is 10 so here it will be 10 uh, cube will be on 10 so height is 70 hb cube by 12 uh, height is 70 base is 10 cube uh, by 12 plus uh, this is area and here this distance will be at z okay this is right to center right distance here if i extend in this line this distance will be z so this distance was 16.54 which is the center right uh, del x is about uh, z axis which is the center right distance about the z axis so, so uh, from 16.54 uh, subtract this 5 we will get the center right to center right distance when we calculate uh, this value the final answer will be this 387 756 millimeter power 4 so here comes the main point product of inertia here in product of inertia uh, there is a little technical point in which many students get stuck and are confused that why we subtract uh, a larger value from a small value i will explain these points here and uh, when we calculate the product of inertia product of inertia is equal about the uh, yz x is, is equal to uh, product of inertia plus a y z product of inertia of that individual section plus a y z so here we have two rectangles we would apply individually for both of these rectangles okay actually this was the l section we divided it into rectangle for our convenience so here uh, i have already told and explained very clearly in the previous video that product of inertia about the centroidal axis comes out as zero so here in this first rectangle when we calculate the product of inertia about this centroidal axis it's, it will become out as zero not only for this rectangle for all symmetrical shapes for square for triangle for semicircle for circle this product of inertia comes out as zero then we have to find this a y and z here area is 616 to 10 and then the y distance is the centroid to centroid vertical distance z is the centroid to centroid horizontal distance or about z axis centroid to centroid means from the centroid of the rectangle 1 to the centroid of the whole section so here this distance will be y and this distance will be z but here there are few things in the product of inertia. In product of inertia, we have to write the positive and negative sign with the y and z. For example, if this is our coordinate system of uh, y, y and z, here the sign convention changes. This becomes our first quadrant, this becomes our second quadrant, this becomes our third quadrant, this becomes our fourth quadrant. In case of z and y, it's not like x, y quadrant, in which this was first, second, third and fourth. In z y it's get inverted okay here both will be positive here z will be positive y will be negative here mm, z will be also negative and y will also be negative here y will be positive and z will be negative okay so here if we look or this section this centroid if we look or this section this is our uh, reference axis centroidal axis okay so if we look or this section the centroid of the first rectangle lies in this second quadrant okay remember this the centroid of the second rectangle lie in this second quadrant and the centroid of the this rectangle lie in this fourth quadrant in case of z when this is fourth quadrant so here uh, z is positive and y is negative and here z is negative and y is positive so we must have to obey and must have to uh, follow this principle and this sign convention so here y is negative we have to evaluate in such a way that y comes out as negative so here that's why we calculate uh, subtract a large value from small okay we can also do uh, like this way that 26.54 which is the this centroidal axis distance minus 5 we will get the centroid to centroid distance but that comes out as positive here we are required with negative value of y why because its centroid lies in the second quadrant of the z y line okay so that's why when its y is negative so we have to subtract like uh, such a way that its value come out as negative so here we have to instead of doing 26.54 minus 5 we would do like this way 5 minus 26.54 
so its value come out as negative okay then here in the second quadrant the z is positive so here the z value is okay here the centroid to centroid distance will be found as 60 by 2 which is 30 30 minus this distance 16.5 so the it's okay now come to this second rectangle this uh, second rectangle here its product of inertia about this centroid axle will be 0 and here its area will be 17 to 10 which is 700 this is the y okay and this is the z so here y is the vertical centroid to centroid distance and z is the horizontal centroid to centroid distance here its centroid lies in the fourth quadrant of the z y plane look at this if z is negative y is positive so here this distance z must come out as negative so here instead of doing like uh, this distance was 16.5 minus 5 we would do 5 minus 16.5 to come out as negative so here the z will become negative and here the y y will be used as the same uh, way like we used here in the product of inertia this distance was 45 minus this distance which is 26.54 so we would uh, we would obtain this value which is uh, subtract 26.54 uh, from this uh, so this will be the y value hope you would get this points that y we subtract 26.54 from 5 and here y we calculate the large value from small to get the negative value as in, in the same condition of the x uh, of the z y plane okay so this was the main point and technical point many students do not get this point and it have issues in such questions so here is the main point when we calculate this value here the value comes out as negative this means that here the z centroidal distance and the y centroidal distance are not the principal axis the principal axis will lie somewhere else because on the principal axis the product of inertia comes out as zero but here the product of inertia is not zero it's it have some value in the negative so it means that these two axes in on which we find out the product of inertia from individual to uh, we shift this from individual to whole when we uh, found out find, when we find out this product of inertia about the centroidal axis it come out it come out as some value so it means that these are not its principal axis then we have to calculate the uh, polar moment of inertia so polar moment of inertia can also be right as j which is the moment of inertia about eight x axis so it's formula is integral of rho square d a rho is equal to rho is also equal to moment rectangular moment of inertia about y axis and z axis so we also uh, here um, in the first uh, few minutes we calculate this rectangular moment of inertia or uh, simply moment of inertia about z and y axis so at these values we would obtain polar moment of inertia which is this value so we have obtained this polar moment of inertia this is its value i hope that you have get these points